Future ICT is addressing the grand challenges of humanity in the 21st century. The financial crisis is just one example that shows that we're not understanding techno socioeconomic systems well enough. We need to learn how to explore and manage our world in a better way, in a resilient and a more sustainable way. We need to understand strongly coupled systems because our world has changed fundamentally. We have connected our systems. Now we have an exchange of people, of goods, of ideas, of everything in the world. And that has created new services and opportunities, but also new risks. That means disasters can spread along the networks that we have created. So we need to understand these strongly coupled systems in order to know how to manage them in the future. Future ICT will help to mitigate and reduce crisis and disaster. We will create new tools to support decision making in difficult situations. So, for example, Future ICT will come up with what we call a policy wind tunnel or a socioeconomic flight similar to that allows to explore different options that we have and the implications of decisions. On the other hand, there will be a whole range of new socially inspired technologies and that will create new businesses and jobs, an age of innovation and creativity in fact. Facebook is just one example that shows how much economic power is in these ideas. In complexity science, it will be important to develop a new theory of multi-level complex systems. We have in fact connected many complex systems with each other. And on the other hand, even those components are complex by themselves. For example, we need to consider cognitive complexity underlying human decision making. There is no theory so far that can really describe these multi-level complex systems. So that theory needs to be developed also to get a much better understanding of economic systems, including the possibility and reasons for financial crisis and how to avoid them. First of all, we need to understand strongly coupled and network systems much better than today. Those strongly coupled systems are determined by the interactions within the system. That means there is an eigendynamics, a self-organization, and those systems are very difficult to control from the outside. They're also hardly predictable in their behavior, and they tend to show extreme events, and actually of any size, and a much higher probability than uh, we would expect according to a normal distribution. So it's very important uh, that we understand these systems much better. Certainly one strategy to make systems more resilient is to have kind of state-dependent decoupling strategies. For example, in our electrical networks at home, we have electrical fuses, uh, which basically interrupt the current if there is a problem in the system. In a similar way, we need to construct network systems in a way that would stop cascading effects before they get systemic. Globalization and technological change have actually changed our world fundamentally. And there is a big knowledge gap about techno socioeconomic global systems. This knowledge gap needs to be filled. We need to catch up with the pace at which there are new crises in our world. And so uh, we need to develop this knowledge. Certainly, there is a lack of knowledge on systemic crisis and systemic risks, on integrated risk management, and also about the behavior of our economic systems. Altogether, 
This strong coupling that we have introduced in our worldwide systems is not well understood and it requires a federated effort and the integration of many different scientific disciplines in order to be able to understand the complexity of those systems. Future ICT will develop a number of new methods and tools in order to understand our world much better than we can do that today. So, for example, there will be a living Earth simulator that is trying to simulate the world in supercomputers. And on the other hand, uh, that will require huge amounts of data. These data will come from what we call the planetary nervous system, which is a sensor network, basically, collecting a lot of data about techno-socioeconomic systems, including the Internet itself. That will allow us to get a much better picture of what is going on in our world. What are the implications of our decisions and actions in order to avoid damage to our society? And then third of all, there will be populated virtual worlds. That means copies of our real world in the virtual world. And these copies will be modified, actually, so we could have different kinds of financial architectures in different copies of this world in order to explore the implications of these different architectures. Or we could explore different buildings or designs for cities, for railway stations, and so on, or for election systems and all this. So basically, these will be tools to explore our future to a certain extent and to have something like a techno-socioeconomic weather forecast. Although this forecast will be inaccurate and also very limited in terms of the prediction time, still that allows us uh, to introduce a number of improvements in the system as we have shown with concrete examples. For example, a, a completely new kind of traffic light control based on self-organization. Actually, those strongly coupled and strongly variable systems of today require a completely different management approach. Rather than a top-down approach, it's often helpful to have more bottom-up elements in the management of these systems. Moreover, there are a number of challenges we need to address in the area of information and communication technologies in the future. First of all, there is a need of privacy respecting data mining technologies. And uh, second of all, we need to have a trusted web. We can see that now cybercrime is becoming more and more influential. And that is actually endangering the internet in itself. We need to have a transparent architecture of the web, uh, which is reputation-based and which makes sure that there is a kind of self-organizing information ecosystem that makes sure that crime and misuse of the web will be limited and we will have a platform that is going to serve everybody. Future ICT has a very strong ethical motivation. We want to benefit humanity and every single individual, in fact. One of the things is that Future ICT will develop technologies for privacy respecting data mining. But we're also thinking about ways how to avoid misuse of supercomputer power and many other things. Actually, we will have an age of social data and social innovation. And from our point of view, it's very important that this knowledge is in the hands of people and not owned by a few individuals or a few companies only. In any case, Future ICT is very committed to ethical research, so we will invest quite a bit of money into this.